Good morning, Destination Church. Thank you for that round of applause, but trust and believe that God is greater. So let that be for God and not for me. All right, so as Pastor Steve has said, those that are new here, this is not the norm, so please come back next week. You cannot base whether you like Destination Church today off of today. I mean, you may love it, but still come back next week. All right, so thanks for coming this morning. Um, I do have a word, um, and I, before I get started, I just want to share why I am up here preaching today. Um, so the Pastor Steve, you know, we were talking this week, and he says, um, I think I got my message. And I said, oh, okay. I said, well, what is it? And he was like, well, I don't know what the title is yet, because I do the graphics for the title, so I try to, you know, get a good graphic for the title. And he's like, I don't know what the title is yet. And I said, okay, but what is it about? And he said, well, you know that story in the Bible where, you know, the husband and wife sold their land? I said, oh, no, 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 no. And he was like, what? And I said, the Lord has given me a message for that since January and you're not taking it. And he was like, I said, but he said, well, what is it about? So I start telling him what it's about. I said, I mean, if you can use different scriptures, then you go ahead, buddy, but you're not, you're not taking that. And he was like, well, it looks like you're preaching this Sunday. So isn't it funny? Isn't it interesting how God works? So God has been downloading this message into me since July and I've been setting on it because, you know, I'm, this isn't, I don't get up here every morning. So I've been setting on it. And so I was not obedient to God. And guess what happened? He gave the same message to Pastor Steve. So here I am. <laughs> so I pray to God today that this will be for somebody. It is very challenging, so I hope you wore your boots. It's getting colder outside, so I hope you guys wore some boots. Um, And hope you come back next week. So I do believe that this is a word for somebody, though. That, you know, God doesn't work and do that if he hasn't, you know, downloaded that into somebody. So I do believe that this is for somebody today. So we're going to open up in prayer, and we're going to get started. Dear Heavenly Father, Lord, we just thank you this morning. Holy Spirit, we ask you to come into this place. Father, I ask that you would use me as a vessel this morning, Lord God. Father, just as you have downloaded this message into me, Father, I pray, God, that you would open up your people's hearts and their ears, Lord God, to receive it from you, Lord God. Father, that everything that comes out of my mouth, Lord God, that it would be pure, Lord God, that it would be from you, Lord, and that it wouldn't be me speaking, but it would be you. So, Father, we just thank you right now, Lord God, because we honor you, Lord, and we thank you. In Jesus Christ's name we pray. Amen. 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 Okay. Can you guys see me? I wore my heels today. Okay. I am standing. Okay. So we're going to read the book of Acts chapter five, one through 11. And this is the passion translation. Now a man, now a man named Ananias and his wife, Sapphira, Likewise sold their farm. They conspired to secretly keep back for themselves a portion of the proceeds. So when Ananias brought the money to the apostles, it was only a portion of the entire sale. God revealed their secret to Peter. So he said to them, Ananias, why did you let Satan fill your heart and make you think that you could lie to the Holy Spirit? You only pretend to give it all, yet you hid back part of the proceeds of the sale of your property to keep for yourselves. Before you sold it, wasn't it yours to sell or keep? After you sold it, wasn't the money entirely at your disposal? How could you plot such a thing in your heart? You have lied to people. You haven't lied to people, but you've lied to God. The moment Ananias heard these words, he fell over dead. Everyone was terrified when he heard what had happened. Some young young men came in and removed the body and buried him. Three hours later, his wife came into the room with no clue what had happened to her husband. Peter said to her, tell me, were the two of you paid this amount for the sale of your land? Sapphira said, yes, that's how much it was. Peter told her, why have you agreed together to test the spirit of the Lord? I hear the footsteps of those who buried your husband at the door. They're coming here to bury you too. At that moment, she dropped dead at Peter's feet. When the young men came in, she was already dead. So they carried her out and buried her next to her husband. The entire church was seized with a powerful sense of the fear of God, which came over all who had heard what had happened. So the title of my message is, What Are You Holding Back? 
So let's get into this. First thing I want to point out is Ananias and his wife conspired to do something in the secret. Have any of you ever done something in the secret hoping not to get caught? Oh, I think we all have, especially if we take our childhood into consideration, okay? So everybody has, okay? Um, and I know that you guys, you know, we're not all good kids. You know, some of y'all were some bad babies. I know, I know it. I know it. I, I probably was too. So the fact is, they lied, trying to hide something that they didn't even have to lie about. The land was theirs. Why did they lie? You know, something I always tell my son is, don't lie to me. You know, you know kids be trying to lie to you, and you know when they're lying. You know when they're lying. And I'm like, okay, Elijah, you better just tell me the truth, because if I find out that you're lying, I'm going to be way more mad. And you know what? I think he's not in here. We have cameras the whole way around our house. I don't look at them, but I'd be saying, like, I'm going to look at the camera, and he'll, he'll be fast to drop the truth real fast. He'll, he will drop the truth fast. So, <laughs> so it is. It's, you know, that's what I tell him. It's better, to not, it's better to tell the truth than to lie. So what? Just tell the truth. Okay. And this is the same way that God is with us. He already knows anyways. So the next time when you want to tell a lie or tell a half-truth or a white lie that people say it, just pretend like you're lying. You need, to, you need to perceive in your mind that you're actually lying to God and not to men because you are lying to God. You're lying to yourself and you're lying to God because you're deceiving yourself because you believe the lies that the enemy puts in your mind, okay? All right, then it goes on to say that God revealed their secret to Peter. So in Am- Am- Amos, Amos, sorry, I didn't give you this, Jen, it's okay. It says, God reveals a secret to his prophets. That's what it says. Now we're going to look at Psalms 25, 14. And it says, the secret of the Lord is with those who fear him, and he will show them his covenant. So what is the scripture saying? If we have the fear of the Lord, he will show us his covenant. Do you know what the word covenant means in the Bible? This is what it means. It means a relationship between two partners that are working together to, or it's a relationship between two partners who bind, who make binding promises to work together to reach a common goal. When I read that, I was like, wow. So if you fear God, he is going to partner with you to work together with you to show you the hidden things because he wants to reveal the hidden things to us. He wants to reveal his secrets to us. But we have to what? We have to walk in a relationship with him, an intimate relationship with God, because he wants to reveal those hidden things to us. The fact is, God does want us, he wants to reveal those things to us. So another example in the book of Genesis, chapter 18, 17, God says, shall I hide what my plan is from Abraham? So we see here in this story in Sodom and Gomorrah, he says, should I hide my plan from Abraham? And if you guys know the story, he doesn't. He's, he tells Abraham what the plan is. So in, in the Bible, it also says that Abraham was a friend of God. And so God, God wants that same relationship with us. So if we have an intimate walking, talking relationship with God, he will reveal the hidden things to us, not just about yourself so that we can clean ourselves up, but about other people around us because we are to disciple people, okay? So trust Trust is a two-way street. So let me ask you this. Can God trust you guys today? Can God trust you? If he tells you something in the secret, if he tells you something in the hidden about somebody, do you just run and go tell everybody? Or can he trust you to just pray for them? So go ahead and ask yourselves, what are you holding back? What am I holding back? Go ahead and ask yourself that. What am I holding back? You see, God trusts us to confront the enemy's plan. He equips us with the tools to do so. In the book of Ephesians in chapter 6, he gives us all the tools, the armor of God. Everybody knows that, right? That was the last message I preached about the armor of God. If you missed it, then you'll have to go back on YouTube with my boxing gloves. I have my boxing gloves. So, you know, so, so why are we not confronting the enemy's plan? Why are we going along with what the enemy plants in our head and we're not standing up against it to do what's right. Why do we just play along with the enemy? When the enemy comes in, what do we have to do? We have to cast down 
We have to say, no, no, I am not this, or whatever the situation is, we have to think with our mind and cast those thoughts down from the enemy, okay? All right, so we're going to go back to verse 3. It says, God revealed their secret to Peter. So he said to him, Ananias, why did you let Satan fill your heart and make you think that you could lie to the Holy Spirit? And then I'm going to jump down into verse 4, and it says, How could you plot such a thing in your heart? You haven't lied to people, but you've lied to God. So they both lied, and God struck them dead. I don't know about you guys, but that should put the fear of, fear of God in all of us. I mean, praise God that he gives us grace, and he doesn't strike us, strike us dead per se. But if we continue to live in a lifestyle of unholiness, we continue to live in a lifestyle of not being obedient to God and by the leading of the Holy Spirit, guess what happens? We do die. We die spiritually. And we get weakened and weakened and weakened. So God might have dropped dead Ananias and his wife Sapphira, but this has a spiritual meaning as well. So we have to look at it, you know, in a spiritual aspect. If we continue to live a lifestyle of sin, sin equals death, right? Then we will spiritually die. You know, what are we feeding our spirit man? Every day we get up and we feed our, our, our flesh. We have to eat. Of course we have to eat. But what are we eating spiritually? What are you taking in spiritually? And I'm pretty sure that none of you guys want to die in here spiritually. Well, I hope you don't. I hope you don't. Praise God. Okay, so one thing's for sure is God is a sovereign God. You know, sometimes we say, well, it's not fair. It's not fair. God never said it was going to be fair. God is sovereign. He is sovereign. So don't think for a minute that God's not going to judge you by your fruits because he does. So let's, let's read Matthew chapter 7, verse 18. It says, a good tree cannot bear fruit, and a bad tree cannot bear good fruit. So, let me ask you this question. Are you producing fruit today? And if you are, is it good fruit or is it bad fruit? Examine your hearts today. Examine your lives today. What kind of fruit are you producing for the kingdom of God? You know, someone is always watching you. Whether you're here in this building, you're at the grocery store, you're driving, I have been guilty for that. And I'm like, oh, Jesus, help me, Jesus. We used to have, I used to have another vehicle, and um, for Better Life Ministries, I had this huge logo with our logo on it and a Better Life Ministries. Y'all, I'd be like, oh, Jesus, I done forgot we had this thing in here, and I'm acting a hot mess. Jesus, help forgive me, Lord. So we have, to be, we have to be mindful when we're out in public, when we're doing things. Like, people are always watching us. We are the example. God showed us the example. And you know what? Somebody out there in the grocery store might be hurting, you know, might be the only Jesus they see is you. So when is the last time when you walked into a grocery store or wherever you're going? When's the last time you've seen someone and it's hurting? Or maybe the Lord tugged at your heart and you wasn't obedient and went up and said, can I pray for you? Because that's what we're called to do as a church body. It's not about being in the building. You know, there's something to say about being in the building, about fellowship, and, but what are we doing when we're not here on Sunday? Yeah. So I'm going to go to verse 7. In verse 7, his, walk, his wife walks in not knowing what had happened to her husband. Can you imagine walking in, you, you, you sell your land, I'm not going to lie, you guys. Like, I probably would be like, I'd probably be the same way. I'd be like, oh, no. Pastor Steve be doing some work. I'd be like, you need to raise your prices, buddy. Raise your price. Because prices have gone up. But can you imagine walking into a room, you don't even know your husband is dead, and then Peter says to me, did you sell your land for this? And I'm like, oh, yeah, we, I sold my land for that. Yep. And then you drop everything. Can you imagine? Can you imagine? Sometimes I sit and think about, had she known her husband was dead, had she known what had happened to her husband, would she had lied or would she have told the truth? So that's the, that is the hidden secret. So when someone calls you on your stuff, do you continue to lie or do you tell the truth? 
Because we've all been there. We've all done it. So had she known that her husband was dead because he lied, do you think that she would have told the truth? I, pro- I probably would have told the truth. I'm like, no, nah, I ain't dying, y'all. I ain't dying today. I ain't dying today. I'm sorry, Jesus. I'm sorry. Jesus, I'm sorry. So, but what happens? What happens? She lied. She went with the plan. So who are you hanging around with? Who are your people of, an in- of influence? You know that saying, birds of a feather flock together? Are you hanging around people who are helping you grow in life and pursue life? Or are you hanging around people who bring you down and, and lead you to a road of destruction? You see what happened to Sephora? Sephora, Sephora, I don't know how you say her name. She went with the plan and she dropped over dead too. But I'm not, I mean, like I said, God's not going to per se drop anybody dead for lying. Please don't misunderstand me. That's what happened in the Bible. I don't know what God's going to do. But I'm just telling you what the Bible says. But we have to think spiritually. If we continue to live a lifestyle like this, we will die spiritually. We will get farther and farther and farther away from the Holy Spirit. We can't even hear him speaking anymore. We can't even hear him. Have you ever been around a group of people who talk about someone or plant discord among you and you come into agreement with it? Have you guys ever? Everyone should have their hand raised in here. Everybody should have their hand raised. Everybody is guilty of that. Everyone. So, when we do that, what happens? We fall into the trap of the enemy. That opens a door for the enemy to come in, and we have now let the enemy come in and rule our life, per se, because we haven't repented. We continue to do that stuff. So when we fall into those traps, it's an open door, and the enemy comes in. So instead of walking away or shutting the person down or saying, is that Christ-like, or stopping them and say, you know, maybe you should just go to that person and, and have a conversation with them because this doesn't have anything to do with me. Instead of doing that, what do we do? We follow suit. Why do we do that? We don't want to be rejected. We want to fit in. We want to feel valued. Can I help somebody today? Stop looking for validation from man. Stop. Stop. Because God is the only person that can validate you. Only God can fill the empty voids that you have. There was, one, there was a point in my life where I looked to Pastor Steve to fill my voids. You know, I didn't ask to be abused. I didn't ask to lose a child. I didn't ask to be adopted. I didn't ask for those things. They just happened. Things happen to us sometimes because of our own actions, but then there's things that happen to us because they just happen, that we have no control over it. I didn't ask for those things, but when those things happened to me, they left a void in my heart. There were things that should have been there from my parents that I did not receive as a child. And because I didn't receive those things, we go out and we start looking for other things, other things to fill a void when the only person that can fill it is God. So there was times that I would go to my husband and I would expect him to fill a void that only God could fill. I was putting an expectation on man that he, he, can't, he can't fill that. He cannot fill that. And another thing, your best friend can't fill it either. So stop talking smack and go to God. Why is it that the first thing that we do is we pick up the phone and we call our best friend and say, blah, 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 blah. I mean, we've, all, we've all been guilty, okay? I've been guilty of that. But why do we always go to man? Why do we always go to man instead of calling on God first? Why? Why do we do that? You know, I had to examine my own self. I mean, this message is for me just as much as it is for you guys. I had to examine my own heart. Okay, God, I'm not putting you first. And when I'm picking up the phone and venting with somebody else, have I went to God? Have I said, okay, God, this is my situation? No. There are times that I have not done that. And so I have to evaluate my own life. So we need to put God first. Maybe you've, been, maybe you've experienced letdown. I'm sure everybody has experienced letdown by a family member, co-worker, 
a spouse, a friend, it hurts. But we have to stop putting our faith in man and put our faith in God. And we cannot let the past hurts define who we are today. We must set boundaries for those who, have, those who have hurt us and those who continue to hurt us. You know, sometimes people, you know, we're walking in life and, you know, there's boundaries. We have to put boundaries up. And if we continue to just let people continue to do those same cycles over and over to us, we're destroying ourselves. We're allowing those things to happen. We have to put boundaries up. And there is such thing as safe boundaries. Sometimes people think, oh, well, they're just, they're mean or they're, you know, oh, uh, uh. no, it's called a boundary. There's a boundary for a reason. There's a boundary there for a reason. And you know what? If people can't respect your boundary, then oh well. The boundary is for you. So can I go a step deeper? So what are you holding back from God? Let me ask you that today. What are you holding back from God? What are you keeping for yourself? Are you straddling a fence today? Why don't we fully surrender to God? So I'm going to go back to verse 3 and 4. I'm not, I mean, 3 and 4 must just really be like... I'm going to read verse 3 and 4, and it says, God revealed their secret to Peter. Maybe you guys will memorize this after we're done. Maybe you'll get it after this. God revealed their secret to Peter, and he said to him, Ananias, why did you let Satan fill your heart and make you think you could lie to the Holy Spirit? You only pretend to give it all. You hid back a part of the proceeds of the sale of your property to keep for yourselves. Before you sold it, wasn't it yours to keep or sell? After you sold it, wasn't the money entirely at your disposal? How could you plot such a thing in your heart? You haven't lied to people, you've lied to God. So it says in there, why did you let Satan fill your heart and lie to the Holy Spirit? Man, man, man. Do you see the work of the enemy in this story? Do you see that? Who sows lies in your mind? Satan does, but who is the one who makes the decision to accept it or decline it? We do. Then it goes from a thought, because Satan puts a thought in your mind, then when you act on it, it goes to your heart. So that's why it says, why did you let Satan fill your heart with a lie? And then you acted on it. You see, we play a huge role in our relationship with God. For years, I would pray to God, okay, God, I'm waiting on you, I'm waiting on you, I'm waiting on you, I'm praying. Come on, God, I'm waiting on you. I'm just waiting on you, God, I'm waiting on you. The whole time, God is waiting on me to make a move. I had to get up and I had to do something. I had to change my circumstances. Maybe you're struggling in your finances today, but you won't go get a job. You can't just sit and wait for God to drop a job in your lap. As a matter of fact, the Bible says if you don't work, you don't eat. That's what the Bible says, not me. That's what the Bible says. You have to, finding a job is work. You have to fill out applications. You got to call and follow, follow up. Sometimes they make you do drug tests. I mean, heck, now they make you do assessments, these little work assessments. I'm like, what would you do if this client did this? And I'm like, depends on the circumstance, but... You know, it takes work, though. It takes work on our part. We have to do something. We can't just sit and wait. Maybe you're addicted to drugs and you need deliverance. Guess what? That takes work on your part. Yeah. When, the, when the thought comes in, oh, I want to use today, I want to use today, guess what you have to do? You have to make a decision. Yeah. You have to do something to say no so that you do not act on it. It takes something on your part. You know, I had to stop thinking that God was just going to drop whatever I wanted in my lap. Because I thought that. I, I literally thought that. Like, okay, God, you said in your word, like, just keep praying, just keep believing, just keep praying, keep believing, keep believing. I believe in Jesus. Like, when is it coming? When is it coming? And nothing was coming. And I was like, oh, my gosh, do you hear me, Jesus? Like, I mean, do you hear? Hello? Because I had to do something. What's free? In, let me ask you guys this question. What is free in life? There are two things that's free in life. What is free in life? What is it? Air and salvation. You are exactly right. Look at y'all. Yes. Now, let me tell you, earbuds are not free and neither is a TV. Okay? 
Let me just tell you that. I'm going to share a little story with y'all. Some funny stuff, okay? I come home, and I see these AirPod earbuds, or they might be the knockoff ones. I don't really know. Sitting there, and I said, what? Did you buy, did you buy those? He was like, no, they were free. I said, free? That ain't nothing free. What you mean it was free? He said, it was free. He said, I'm surprised just as you are. They, they sent them to me in the mail. I said, oh, my gosh, if you don't stop going on stuff on your phone. He said, well, we're supposed to get a TV here soon from Comcast, a free TV from Comcast. I said, I'm going to tell you what. You better start monitoring your bank account because they ain't nothing free. Salvation is free and the air is free that you breathe. Yeah. Only salvation is free. So guess what? Yeah, but we're going to gonna keep on monitoring that bank account. We're going to keep monitoring because ain't nothing free. There was, there was some little clause in the little writing you didn't see of your glasses. Trust and believe that. They're coming for you. I rebuke that in the name of Jesus. In the name of Jesus. So, so what am I saying? It takes work. It takes work. Salvation is the only thing that's free. You can, you can say a prayer of salvation and that is free. But let me tell you, your relationship with God, that takes work. Yeah. You know, it's a two-way street, just like me and Pastor Steve. We cannot have a relationship if, if we're both not doing something together. It's the same thing with God. You know, I had to take time and get with God. I had to set time aside for God to, to pray, to read, to fast. You know, those four-letter words that nobody really wants to hear about, read, pray, and fast. I had to do that. I had to sit in the quiet and hear from him. I had to wait for the nudging of the Holy Spirit to direct me to the next. And if you guys know me, I'm not a very patient person at all. I struggle in that area very much so. It's like I kind of want McDonald's and put my order in and I want it now. But God doesn't work like that. So that has been a struggle for me, and I just keep pushing through and keep asking God to help me. So we have to get to a place where we're listening to the Holy Spirit to direct us to our next. I had to get out of bed every day and put one foot in front of the other. Even when you don't feel like it. There's days you feel like you don't want to even get out of bed, but you have to. You have to get up. You have to put one, front, one foot in front of the other and keep moving. Amen. You just have to. I mean, you do have the choice. You do have the choice to not do that. But where does that leave you? Spiritually dead. It leaves you spiritually dead. That's where it leaves you. Do you know how hard it is for me sometimes? You know when you read and you pray and you fast? Well, you get up in the morning. For me, you get up in the morning. You get your coffee. And you start reading and you're praying. And then you take some time to just listen in the quiet listen for God to speak to you, that is so hard for me because then I start thinking about, okay, what do I have to do today? What are we going to eat for dinner today? What am I going to make Pastor Steve make me for dinner? <laughs> you know, and so it's a distraction. That's what the enemy does. He comes in, he tries to distract our minds so we can't focus on God. And to be honest with you, I still struggle with distraction. Sometimes I'm like, all right, Satan, leave me alone. I'm trying to pray here. Sometimes I have to talk to myself. Sometimes we need to talk back to ourselves. So in verse 3, it says, you only pretend to give it all. Stop pretending you have it all together. Just stop pretending. When you're really falling apart on the inside, stop pretending. The longer you keep pretending that you have it all together, the longer you're going to keep on doing the same things you're doing. Just stop pretending. Because guess what? God already knows about it. And he wants you to acknowledge to God. He wants you to say it out loud. Okay, God, I'm struggling in X, Y, and Z. And you know why he does that? Because he wants to heal those areas. He wants to heal those areas. We have to be transparent with ourselves and with God. He already knows it. We have to get to a place where our healing is more important than the air that we breathe. You know, what is important to you? You know, I always say this. I always say, we make time for what we want to do. People say stuff like, I don't have time, I don't have time, I don't have time. You make time for what you want to do. If you want to go to a ball game, you're making time for it. You make time for what you want to do. 
People getting on Facebook. Have you ever been around somebody that says, oh, I don't have time for that. I don't have time for that. But they, they got time to post their fried chicken, their corn, their mashed potatoes and gravy. Look what I made for dinner. And then they got their selfies like, get off Facebook. Get off of Facebook. You got time to put a whole message about what you're eating for dinner. Unless you're sharing, I don't care. So let's be more intentional about what we're doing with our lives. Like we, if we commit and say we're going to do something, we need to do that. We need to stop making excuses to God because you're making an excuse to God. You might be making an excuse to a man, but you're really making the excuse to God. You know, if you want something bad enough, you'll do whatever it takes to pursue it. Pastor Steve works with addicts all the time. And, what, and one thing that he tells them is, if you want to be clean, you have to do whatever it takes you would do whatever it takes to get clean. You do. Is it going to be easy? Absolutely not. I personally do not know, but I've watched it. And it was not easy. It's not easy. I can't imagine. But you have to want it just as much as you want to breathe. Sometimes in our lives we go through things, and sometimes it might not be drugs. It might be something else. Who knows? It might be, you know, you, you, you was molested as a child. I don't know. And that holds you down. You have to break free from that because that's not who God has called you to be. Just because you went through something, it doesn't mean that that's who you are today. You know, it's the same thing with God. God wants us to pursue him like a drug. He really does. And he says there's no, no one before him, no idols before him. So what's that mean? It means that God is number one. Yeah. Number one. Now, how is it that we can become addicted to, to drugs, alcohol, sex, tobacco, food, social media, TV, shopping, and shoes? Okay, I was going to leave that one out, but that's for me too. So this message is for me, so I'll just put the shoes in there. I took over Pastor Steve's closet. For my shoes too. <laughs> yeah, help him. I don't know what it is for you. You fill in the blank. That's for you to find out. I'm not here to judge you, but all we all have something that we are putting before God. You know that song? Remember that song? I'm addicted to love. That song. Y'all don't know that song? I'm like, it's probably when, when did that song come out? In the 80s. Oh, I was born. I'm sorry. I was born then. Well, anyways, that song. I know y'all know it. Y'all acting like y'all so holy, like y'all been saved your whole life. We need to be addicted to the love of God. We need to be addicted to reading his word, to praying, to fasting. Our thoughts need to become his thoughts. And that's what he wants. Our desires then become his desires because he puts his desires in our hearts. So what am I saying? Why are we holding back the trash of yesterday and not putting it in a dumpster where it belongs. Why? Come here, Sue. Can you bring that book back? You gonna be okay? I'm gonna use Sue. Isn't she beautiful today? Look at her, just so beautiful. All right, you're gonna put this on your back. Oh, hold on, can you fit it? it was, it's Elijah's backpack. I, w I wanted to show you guys something. I know it won't fit. Need some lace on. All right, it's going to be really tight. It's okay. You're going to need it tight because you know what? It's going to get heavy. Oh gosh. Okay, so this is Sue, and she's got her invisible backpack on, and she's walking through life. Walking. And right now, you it don't. She's just going through life, and she's just doing a great job, but. Things keep happening, things in the past. Come here, come here, Sue. Turn around. It's gonna get heavy. You just, please don't drop to your knees. Tell me before it gets too heavy. Okay. So, go ahead and I'll start walking. So we got some weight in there. Rejection, maybe some rejection. Slowing her down, right guys? Come on, walk back here. Oh, 
Oh, please don't let your back break. Keep walking. Okay, she's get, it's getting, she's really starting to be bogged down. The loss of a child, a divorce. She's carrying this stuff through her life. And it's bogging her down. Come on back here, Sue. You're gonna need some help? <laughs> okay. I'm scared to drop this one in here. You got it? Okay, keep walking. Okay, now she keeps walking through life and those things that in her childhood that have been there, that it's been a void. Somebody triggers it and she just keeps on, you just keep piling things over and over again and it just bogs you down. It bogs you down. So what do we need to do with this? Can you take it off? Come on, girl, you got this. Jesus is going to have to be up here with me and help me. He's going to help you. Come on, get your arm out there. Oh, gosh. I can't. <laughs> she can't. She can do it. Say, I can do it. I got it. I can. Thank oh, you, my Lord. gosh. So what do we have to do? We have to throw it at the altar where it belongs. We need to throw it in the trash because that's where it belongs. You know, healing sometimes takes a while. You know, things that we've gone through in our past, sometimes it takes a while to get past those things. But we have to first recognize it. We have to deal with it. We have to process it. And then we have to throw it down at Jesus' feet because that's what he's called us to do. He wants us to throw it down to him. Why do we hide from God? Are you hiding from God today? Are you believing the lies that the enemy whispers in your ear? Why don't we surrender to him? We want to surrender some things to him, but some things we don't surrender to him. The hidden things and the not so hidden things. You see, in this story, holding back things for yourself equals death. It, it left them dead. They held things back for themselves and it left them dead. It will eventually lead you to a road of spiritual death. We only want to give a portion to God, but giving just a portion doesn't work. It doesn't work. The Bible says what? The Bible says to be hot or to be cold. To be lukewarm, he's going to spew you out. So are you sitting in a lukewarm state today? Ask yourself that. Evaluate your life today. Or are you just giving a portion to God? Do you just give a portion? Okay, God, I, I came here for my two hours on Sunday, and I hope you bless me the rest of the week. Is that what you're doing? Because you shouldn't be. Because he, he paid the price for you on the cross, and he didn't have to. Maybe it's your money. Are you wondering why you can't get out of debt? Or you can't get ahead in life, and you're living paycheck to paycheck? Have you only given a portion of your, your tithing, of your money to God? Have you done what he's commanded you to do? I can promise you one thing, that God's not slack on his promises, and I can tell you the Bible says to try him, to trust him. Try him and see if he doesn't pour you out a blessing. I can tell you right now, all the hell that I've been through in my life, I have, I have had vehicles repossessed, I've, I've lost a job because of relocation, all things happening all at one time. But I can tell you that God has never, I've never gone hungry, I've never not had a place to lay my head. Me and Pastor Steve went to Costa Rica in 2009, and we didn't know nothing. We didn't know no Espanol, we know a little bit of Paquito now. We didn't know nothing. We went there blindfolded. Because God told us to do it. It was a little scary ankle lot. We got off the plane, we was driving, and there was bars all over the windows and the doors. I said, oh, where did you bring me? I need you to take me back home. And then when I seen the big cockroaches, buddy, I said, it's time to go home. I put them, you know them long socks? Them long socks? I put Pastor Steve's long socks on. Then put sweatpants on top of them. I was like, ain't nothing eating me while I'm sleeping at night. Yeah. But it's different. But I can tell you one thing. We went down there with no support. We had a little bit of money. We did rent two places, I believe. But our money ran out. We was there for almost a year. Our money ran out. There would pe be people that would knock at the door and, get, and drop off groceries. People would come and knock on the door and say, come on, I'm going to take you grocery shopping today. Then people would come and say, you know what? We're going back to the States for three months. We want you to come stay in our house so it's occupied. Didn't have to pay nothing. So God provided. Yes, 
He always provides. Are you given a portion of your time and talents today? Some of you are warning what God's called you to do, but you won't step out in faith to even serve or even shadow a ministry to see where your passion is. So you sit and you complain that you don't, okay, God, what are you calling me to do? What are you calling me to do? What are you doing to step out to see what God wants you to do? Some of you are sitting in here on gifts. God has given you gifts and you're just sitting on them because you're scared to step out. It's more comfortable sitting in the pews week after week. I get it. I get it. How will you ever trust God if you don't step out in faith? Isn't that what faith is? You have to step out not knowing the unknown. It's scary, I know. It's one thing that gets me every time. If I just knew, if I just knew, if I only knew when I married this guy that they would tell me what I was going to have to throw I'm like, buddy, you have a nice life. Yeah. But God has different plans. Sometimes we have to go through trials. You know, God was working. God has been working stuff out. I'm like, Lord, why? I'm getting to that point. Y'all wait. Y'all wait. I haven't always been saved. Ask Pastor Steve. I have not always been saved. So, you have to step out in faith. You could be prolonging your destiny or what God's calling you to do because you're scared, because you're letting fear come in. So ask yourself, what am, what am I holding back? What are you holding back from God? Are you giving a portion of your time to prayer and fasting, reading, worshiping? Do you sit and soak in the why me, why God, why me, why is this happening? Why can't, why can't I catch a break? I just need a breakthrough. Or are you putting in the work to change your circumstances? Some of you are going around the same mountain because you're doing the same thing and you're expecting a different outcome. You know what that's called? That's called chaos. And guess who's not in chaos? God. God's not in chaos. That used to be me. I would have this attitude of, why me, God? Why me? I didn't deserve this. And da, da, da. And one day God spoke to me. He got tired of me complaining. And he said, why not you, Ashley? I said, well, I don't know. <laughs> he said, I didn't deserve to go on the cross and die for you, but I did. I said, oh, I'm sorry, Jesus. I'm sorry, Lord. So we have to get out of that attitude. Sometimes God calls us to do things in our lives, whether we ask for it or not, but he has a reason for it and he has a purpose for it. You know, like I said before, I never asked to be adopted. I didn't ask to be abused. I didn't ask to lose a child. I didn't ask to go through health problems. I didn't ask for any of those things. But I have to have a different perception, change my mind, why am I going through this? Okay, God, what do you want me to learn? Who can I minister to? Because did you know that the trials that we go through, it builds character? God is building character. So instead of sitting and soaking in the why me, I've been there for a while. Right, Pastor Steve? It was terrible, terrible. Yeah, praise God. He's praising now. But instead of soaking in the why me, let's change our perception and say, okay, God, yes, this happened. Yes, it wasn't fair, but okay, God, what can I learn from this? Okay, God, where can I move forward? Who can I touch with my story? Life sucks sometimes. It throws us curveballs, like the big ones, like them big softballs. It gives you bruises and stuff, but we just take the bruise and keep limping. Then eventually, like Elijah over here limping on his crutches, he's eventually going to start running. I tried to put that kid on the bus on Monday. They said, oh, no, he will not be ready by Monday. I said, oh, gosh. Okay. All right. I'll just keep taking him to school, picking him up, taking him to school, picking him up. I just want to put him on the bus. You know why I want to put him on the bus? Because he gets on the bus an hour earlier and stays late an hour earlier. That gives me two more hours, you guys, two more hours during the day. Two more hours. Jesus, help me. Jesus, help me. I prayed for that kid. Do you believe that? I had, a, I had gotten pregnant and I had a miscarriage and I lost a child. And when I met Pastor Steve, he couldn't have any children. He told me that. And I was like, but you know, Pastor Steve, just, he just swept me right off my feet. He would hold the door in for me. He would be like, oh, you want that? Buy it. I'm like, do you even know how much a gallon of milk costs? He'd be like, no. I'm like, oh, okay. So in my mind, I'm like, well, do I want kids or do I want someone to treat me with respect? Because in my life, I never had that. 
And so when he treated me like that, I'm like, oh my gosh, like, what do I do with this? So I chose that. And Pastor Steve has three other kids upon me marrying him. And I'm not going to sit here and, and sit up here and lie to you in the pulpit because we're talking about lying today. <laughs> but I'm going to tell you what, when you think you've healed from something and then God brings something in, even sometimes even being around his other children, it would, it would, it would, it would hurt my heart. It would trigger me. It would trigger me. Okay, God, why did, why did I lose my child? Why? And it would trigger me. And I would try to cover it up. And I kept trying to cover it up. Like it didn't bother me. But God dealt with it. He dealt with it. And I kept praying. I mean, I was like, okay, Lord. Honestly, I got to a point where I didn't even want any kids. I'm not going to sit here and keep lying, y'all. I'm just not going to lie. And I went to the doctors because I was so sick. I was like, oh, my gosh, I need an antibiotic. I thought I had the flu. And she's like, are you pregnant? I said, no, ma'am. Pastor Steve had a vasectomy, okay? I said, no, ma'am, it's not possible. She said, okay, well, we're just going to do one anyways. Okay, here's my pee. Here you go. Okay, you guys? She comes back in, and she says, well, it looks like you're pregnant. And I said, um, I think you're smoking drugs. That's exactly what I said to her. And she was like, I mean, we got kids in here. I mean, did you, with any, what, did you have, other than your husband? And I was like, no. Like, what are you saying? She's like, well, I'm just telling you you're pregnant. And I was like, she's like, so you need to go over here and make yourself an appointment. And honestly, I was like, oh, my God. How am I going to tell this man that I am pregnant? I was scared. I was like, oh, my God, Jesus. And we, and we, we I had two jobs at the time. So when I was, I didn't get home till like 11 o'clock at night. And he was already in bed because he'd be up early at 4 o'clock in the morning doing some construction stuff. So we never really seen each other except for on the weekends. So it probably, you know, was a weekend, a weekend baby. But I was like, I can't tell this man over the phone. I got to tell him face to face. So he, I call him. He's like, how's your doctor's appointment go, hon? I was like, and I just changed the subject. I started talking about something else. And he kept bringing it back. And I was like, all in one breath. I said, I'm freaking pregnant. It's your kid because I have sex with nobody else. So if you want a DNA test, I don't care. <laughs> all in one big old breath. I was scared, y'all, because I'm like, oh, my gosh. I mean, I mean, I was kind of new at being a Christian. Like, I mean, I didn't know that God worked like that. And so then I'm like, oh, my gosh. And Pastor Steve response said, well, whosoever kid it is, they better pay child support. And I said, well, you better get another job. Okay. So, sorry, sidebar, guys. Okay, so, so he's always doing something for a reason. So just remember that, okay? And he's building your character. So we have a huge part to play here. So God gives us free will. There are some things that we cannot change, but, but how will we ever know if we don't do something to change it? Sometimes all we can do is pray. But sometimes we have to take just a little step. Yeah. Sometimes it's a, it's a, it's a um, step. Hold on. Sometimes it's a little step, sometimes it's a leap, and sometimes it's a huge jump. But we have to watch him work. Sometimes all it takes is an act of obedience. So how we ever know what God's doing if we, what God's doing in us if we are not living the example he showed for us? God has given us the example. How can we disciple somebody when we can't even disciple ourselves? We let our emotions get the best of us. Some of you need to stop consulting your feelings and consult God. So in closing, so in closing, I want you guys to ask yourself, I want you guys to ask yourself this question. Are you giving just a portion to God today? Are you pursuing God wholeheartedly? Are you seeking him with intentionality? Examine your hearts today. Ask God. What am I holding back from you today? Are you living in a, in a state of lukewarm? 
Maybe you've been hurt from the past. Maybe you've walked through trials and, and things in the past have hurt you and it's, it's stopped you and you haven't been able to move forward and take one step and put it in front of the other. Maybe that's you today. That was me. That was me. I had to do that. I had to say, okay, God, I'm gonna let you work. I'm gonna surrender it all to you because I cannot continue to keep going around the same mountain, God. I can't afford to continue to go around the same mountain. If that's you, I want you to come to the altar. The prayer team could come. If that's you today, please come to the altar. Maybe you let Satan fill your heart with lies today. Maybe that's you. Maybe you've believed lies and you've let Satan just fill your heart. That's you, come to the altar. If you are acknowledging today, if you say, God, I'm holding things back from you and I don't know where to turn. I don't know, I don't know how to lay it down. I don't know what to do. I don't know what the next is. If that's you, come to the altar. Because here at the altar is where wholeness is. Here at the altar is where peace is. This is where you find your healing. Don't be afraid, don't let fear stop you. Like I said, your healing has to be more important than the air that you breathe. It has to be more important than the air that you breathe. So I want you guys to come. Maybe you're watching online and you're saying, this is me. You're speaking to me, you're speaking to my heart today. I want you to get in the chat. I want you to text the word prayer. Or you can text the word prayer to the number on the screen and I will be sure that someone will reach out to you and pray with you personally. Because this is what we're here to do. We're here to, to lift each other up. We're here to help one another. It's not about just you. The things that you've gone through are not for you, they're for somebody else. And you can't continue to sit in it. I can promise you that when I started putting one foot in front of the other, when I started stop soaking in myself and why me and the pity, when I started moving, when I started putting one foot in front of the other, God started moving. God started using me in despite of my mess, in despite of the things that I've gone through. He started ministering out of my places of hurt unto other people because that's what it's for. It wasn't for me. I didn't walk through this for me. I walked through it for somebody else. Heavenly Father, Lord, I thank you for today, God. I thank you for your presence here today, Lord Jesus. Father, we honor you, Lord God. Father, I thank you, God, that you died on the cross for us, Lord, that you paid the price, that you shed your blood for all of us, oh God. Father, I thank you. Father, I pray, God, that today as we leave, Lord God, that there will be changed hearts, Lord, that you would begin to penetrate our hearts, oh God, that you would begin to manifest yourself in us, oh God. Begin to show your light, Lord, in the dark places. Father, that we might be able to, to be healed from those things, Lord God. That we might be able to get up and walk. Put one foot in front of the other, God. Father, I pray, Lord, that your Holy Spirit would continue, Lord, to minister to us, oh God. To give us wisdom and knowledge, Lord God. Father, I thank you, Lord. I thank you, God. Because you didn't have to do what you did for us. God, but you chose to. So, Father, I thank you, Lord, that those are here today, Lord God, and those that'll watch later, Lord. Father, I pray, God, that you would just begin to stir up, Lord God, things that they've been holding back from you, Lord. Father, I pray that you would begin to just manifest them, Lord God, and deal with their hearts, Lord Jesus. Father, we never fail to give you the praise and the glory. In Jesus Christ's name we pray, and we thank you, God. Good morning, guys. This is Pastor Steve and Pastor Ashley here. We just want to hop on here and thank you so much for joining us this morning. And we hope you enjoyed the service. Yeah, so right now we want to take this opportunity. If this message really touched your life today, we want you to know that here at Destination Church, we care about you. And we have a pastoral care team that wants to take the opportunity to pray personally with you. So right now we want you to take this time and text the word prayer to the number on the screen.
And God has given us a vision at this church, and the vision is to restore his people back to intimacy with him. Yes. Restore God's children together as one body and to restore the church back to the community. So if you want to find out what's going on here at Destination Church or learn more about Destination Church, we want you to get on our website and connect with us. You can do that on Facebook, you can do that on YouTube, and we also, you can get on the website as well. Um, we want to take this opportunity to invite you to join us each Sunday at 10 a.m. and then on Wednesdays at 7 p.m. for our prayer night. Praise God. We love you.